Well, we want to look at these uh, topics here. Okay, the invent. We look at go through them one by one and see what the syllabus says about it. All right. So the first one we have there. In fact, number one and number two would be number one and number two would be your. Uh, these two here would be module one so you could expect a question on module one with two parts one for overhead quotes and one for inventory stock valuation okay in module two we're looking at uh, costing systems job costing activity base and marginal mm -hmm. and costing and absorption costing are you guys hearing me by the way i unmute yes sir right. yeah, we are here. you could stop me and ask me questions at any time right there's a free um exercise okay so we're looking at the the cost Module two there will be costing system, jobs costing, activity base and marginal costing and absorption costing. I think the income statements should be falling into that there as well. But um, the income statement most likely are going to be marginal costing, absorption costing, income statements. Okay, this one here is module three budgeting master budgets standard cost in capital budgeting techniques right so we know what gonna come here um from now the whole focus of my um revision would be on these topics with you right okay and preparation for your exam i will focus on these here but you should not do that just in case Okay, because you have your multiple choice people that you have to prepare for as well. Right? So let's see what the first one inventory or stock valuation methods. This is what the syllabus says about it. For that, we have um, LIFO, FIFO, weighted average. Right? And you need to assess the methods so you normally you do this by doing the trading account and um, showing the different uh the different gross profit and cost of sales that you could get from these different methods of valuation right uh now remember when we did this we did it different from uh, what you learn at CSEC. Okay, it's slightly different what we use at A levels, especially with the weighted average. Okay, and for FIFO and LIFO, we just take the, the first set of units that we buy as being the closing stock on LIFO and FIFO, the opposite, the last set. Weighted average, we is we use the formula um, total cost divided by the amount of units in hand okay so that is as much as i could see taking place with top valuation methods uh, overhead costs this is what we have for overhead costs right we have the type of overhead cost expenses semi and fix and fix right usually you find that the um variable expenses are usually uh, direct costs rather than overhead costs so, okay but uh cxc have the strange way of putting variable costs uh, in direct costs as we saw in some of our past paper questions right nevertheless whatever they want to call them you can um, still treat them as we learn to treat them right the apportionment of overhead costs 
Uh, okay, basis of apportionment. And uh, over here, I think they're talking about the step down on the direct and the continuous allotment. They promise not to give you more than two steps down in the syllabus, but we have had questions with more than two steps down, okay? Calculation of predetermined overhead recovery rates using just the three basis machine hour, direct labor hours, and direct labor course. All right, you should not be tested outside of those. Service allocation, allocation of service course department. All right, this is where your reciprocal and direct methods come in, you step down repeated distribution limited to two steps right so um you should be pretty okay over here if you cover all these items and you know them well enough right yes so because you you would be expecting here in this to get about 20 at most 20 marks or no this if just this and if overhead course and valuation of inventory are the only two topics in module one that come in here you can expect as much as 20 marks or so from here right okay we will look at the module three now cost and systems and we'll include income statement in that Right, the costing systems. All right, uh, we'll probably be looking at this in terms of um, traditional costing systems and new costing systems. The only new costing system here is the activity base, right? The, these, this, and this is traditional costing system. Uh, I'm seeing this as a topic by itself. Okay, so the only thing this can mean is traditional and um, new costing systems, right? Um, the only new one will be activity base. Next we, topic we have there is job costing, fairly straightforward. It includes batch costing, is a number of jobs, right? job course sheets you must show the three elements of course and the markup or the margin remember <laughs> remember how we had it in i think a couple of questions that we did the flow of course to the jobs evaluation of the work in progress uh, the work in progress usually consists of the three elements of course uh, prime course and factory course. Okay, now um, bear in mind that job posting could also have uh, a manufacturer and account in it. Okay, predetermined overhead rates, the OER, where you take the overhead for a department or for the factory as a whole and you divide it by some base. Then you have over and under absorption of overhead where you have to compare the actual overhead with the one calculated using the pre ohr here right after you get the uh, the, the over and the absorb you must make the adjustment in the income statement if the question allows it most of the questions that uh, keep asks does not allow for it. They only give you one of the um, item, either the predetermined overhead rate or the actual. Okay, let's take a look at the next topic. Activity-based costing. And uh, it's really, uh, they give us the specific objectives here. You can look up the senior syllabus. And you have to learn to choose course drivers 
activity levels and activity rates. Okay, so you should be able to choose course drivers. Activity levels is um, unit level, batch level, all right? And uh, activity rates, you should be able to calculate them as well. Choosing the appropriate course driver. Marginal costing and absorption costing. We know the techniques. The techniques really consist of um, you, you get any unit cost for each item in absorption costing. You use the three elements in marginal costing. You're going to leave out the fixed cost. You use the three elements again, but you leave out the fixed cost. Okay, income statements, marginal cost of income station. Right, and pay particular attention to this here. We work a couple of problems with it. With it. Uh, you can memorize the formula or you can uh, try reasoning it out and going into the exam. Okay. Now, this here could include, the techniques here could include break-even analysis and uh, capital uh, budgeting as well, right? Sorry, not capital budgeting, but um, break-even analysis. All right, now the module three will consists of these here. Okay. And um, budgeting itself, it would be talk, talking about the objectives, the role of the budget committee, and the budgetary control. You know, they like to ask you, name two objectives or three objectives. So arm yourself with about four or five properly here and the same thing here with the budget committee and budgetary control okay so this is pretty, this one is pretty straightforward then we have the master budget and uh, most textbooks would call the master budget uh, the a budgeted balance sheet and income statement and cash flow, right? That's it, the master budget should be a final in our textbook, but uh, keep calls it these things, okay? So uh, be careful when you're using your books to do it, right? The cash budget and all the supporting service schedule, collection from the account receivable and the disbursement for purchases and for overheads, right? Um, purchases budget, sales budget, production budget. I think I did two problems with that from your past paper. And uh, the videos, some of them are up on YouTube as well. So this uh, module three is very comprehensively done in the PowerPoint presentations, you would see them on, on in your classroom still, in the old classroom, as well as the new one, you need to check out both of them. And, um, and then you would see them up in the YouTube channel. There are a number of questions there to deal with that. I plan on doing some others again, because this is an area where you can get full marks. So I might do one or two questions on these again with you before your exam. Okay. Standard question, right? A part question. It most likely might ask you things about these here. All right, the concept and the standard setting process. Process any textbook would cover these pretty quickly in a few pages that you could memorize and so on. 
it usually standard course and usually goes together with variance analysis you can't get away from that right although this wasn't stated on the topics i would think you should memorize the formulas here just in case they are going to ask you to calculate one or two of them right so these two go hand in hand capital budgeting techniques okay so this has to do with the payback period right the specifically state techniques you need to be able to write a, a paragraph on each one of them also because sometimes they can ask you to describe the system or the technique right and you have to know those four net present value discounted payback you could have the normal payback and the internal rate of re return ERR is down here right but those four you need to know them okay CP back also appear here so these two here does not take into consideration the value of money change in time the other two NPV and IRR and the discounted payback would take that would that into consideration the investment making decision you must be able to apply the criteria from here to see whether you accept or reject the um, decision okay and that brings us to the end of it so if you want to ask any questions we can discuss go further into it but